today I am confining my queen that I would like to breed from. This is my 2020 queen that came through 2022 winter, which we're kind of still in, like a champ, and I want her genetics. She's been great for two and a half years. But in order to make a perfect graph and to be able to pull the right frame without going through her population, I'm going to confine her behind a queen excluder and essentially making a split. So this is a divider that has a queen excluder set into it. And I'm going to take this box and set it in. And she's going to have she's going to have I think I give her three frames to lay into, and I might bring that down to two. I might, what I'd like to do is give her a little bit of honey on the far side and give her two to lay into. This is going to be open brood so that the workers are here and they'll care for this queen. When I start off, I'm trying to give her only open brood, or I mean, excuse me, only cap brood. They'll come out, they'll do with the queen. There's nurse bees then, plenty to take care of a new frame of eggs. And then every fourth day, I'll come in and give her a new frame of worker comb to lay into. If I time it just right, those graphs, or excuse me, I'm already jumping ahead, those newly laid eggs will be in four days, the new larva, and just the right age to graph from. Easy peasy. It sure beats having to look through what could be a monster hive for a frame of good larva to graft from. This way I'm looking through maybe three frames, like I said, probably two, because one's gonna be honey. And what I'm going to do is, her original spot was where the empty bottom board is. This way, when workers do come back, I'm probably gonna move her a little bit further out They'll come back and repopulate so she won't be left with no workers. Once she's in there, it takes her a day or two to actually get comfortable because she really doesn't like being behind that queen excluder. This is an open bottom one side. I run these double bottoms. So you can't put her in maybe like anything that has an entrance on both sides because she will leave. I've had one queen when I was first starting this method. She actually walked out the door looking to get to the other side of the excluder. Right now, she doesn't, she doesn't really do that. I don't know what the difference is, but they don't. So it's a warm day, but it's overcast and we're expecting rain, so nobody wants to be opened. So 
So from here over is going to be her two frames, and I'm going to confine that area. I'm going to confine it either with a, a staple of a screen or a wood block because of her wanting to leave and find the other side, and that defeats my purpose. This is the reserve comb that you're going to want to have because on that fourth day when you go to add a frame, you want it drawn out. You want it worker size and uh, everyone that's, you know, foundationless knows what that is. You, you, you know, your worker size comb versus your drone comb is at a premium. So you want to have a reserve of that. amount of drone the drone is right here nice amount
it's an ice cream of pollen. So I'm going to leave that in there. That's all black capped honey. So because I don't want to leave her with no stores, definitely want to put that in there. The pollen has to be next to the brood. So Was mostly honey, the exception of like three frames of brood, which means she's doing great up there. It's a beautiful frame of pollen. Just a beautiful place, all packed full of pollen. Okay, my camera fell, but hey. Like I said, it's, it's very hot, but they're not the nicest, right? So they're do, being really good. But I know that as soon as the humidity changes slightly, they feel a drizzle. They don't, they don't like it, and I don't know when the rain's supposed to be late, so. Ram of cat. I have another queen to put into this hive. I just, and I'm not going to leave her with nothing, but I'm going to give them a day to be queenless before I install. Take this one. I do have to find the queen on this run. That's the whole point. That's another nice one. I got plenty of drones already out and running around. Nice 
frame. I need to find the queen. I may have to go back up to the second box. Another pollen frame. going to do the cursory second look, but when I go to the second box again, I'm not going to put it back on because then she can run down. The best thing is to keep your boxes separate when you're looking for her. For her golden legs, look for her big abdomen. You can also look to see if she may be sitting in the middle of a retina, her retina. This is that pollen frame. Hopefully she wasn't there. add anybody. Now we have to go back and look in the second box again. Easy to miss a queen? Sure it is. Even when you think you know what you're doing. She's supposed to be on the brood. Is she always? No. right there. Nice, big, fat, healthy looking girl. Before I lose her, she's going to go right in. This is the queen excluder divider. This is a frame of brood, an open brood. She's on a frame of brood. I'm okay with that because I'm not grafting in exactly four days. This is a frame of pollen. This is a frame of honey. I'm gonna put another frame of brood in there. And that'll make it a three frames of brood. I think she may need one more honey just to keep her comfy. And we'll see how that goes. That was an easy find for her. I should have, well, you can always second guess yourself. I realize I don't like looking up at my camera. I like looking down, but either way. 
You can second guess yourself where you should have found the queen, but you have to look at the lid. You have to look on the honey. You have, you start in the brood, but she's not always there. And they'll say, no, she's in the brood. She's in the brood. She's in the middle of the box. I have found her on the honey. I have found her on the floor. I have found her on the lid. I have found her on the queen excluder itself. So just because you didn't find her doesn't mean she's not there unless you are sure there's no eggs and no larva and then probably she's not there but that's a different horse of a different color. So let's get back and finish my job. Okay, so you always want open brood up against the queen excluder divider. Even when she's finally on her, her empty frames and you want her to lay only on the empty frames, you want open brood there so that all the nurse bees gather there. The frame closest but not inside the queen excluder should be open brood because that's going to gather nurse bees and help her lay in the frame you want her to lay in. So right now I have five, seven frames. One is honey. I have these two which are reserved. I have no problem leaving these two reserves in because now they'll be cleaned by the bees and they'll smell a lot better to go back in and help her lay for my grafts in about 10 days. So I have two runs for her to lay. That should get her comfortable. I have time to do my work. I just posted a video about the three principles of queen rearing and that's because you have to know these things and it's best to know it before you start so you don't make the mistakes and say well I just didn't know I didn't realize because queen rearing is planning organization and once you start it start you don't have a chance to just say yeah I don't want to do that anymore you've already started the action and if you've already started the action The hive is in jeopardy if you don't continue it. And also your, your time is worth a lot more than we ever get paid for it, right? Okay. So this is another frame of brood. And because this is pollen, I'm going to move it up against the honey. So she's got three frames of brood at this point, a nice frame of pollen, a nice frame of honey. All right, you want, maybe I want to give her one more. Let's see what I got. As I'm closing this one up, I'm closing up all the brood up close to each other. Try not to ever leave your brood separate. Don't have to make them figure out how to keep it warm. I think I'm good. I'm going to leave that brood there. She's going to be laying. I think I'm going to give her one more frame of honey and an empty with pollen in it.
Okay, this frame is empty. It's going up against the queen. It's got some older pollen in it. They'll be able to utilize that or clean it out, whichever they would like. Then I want my frame of honey. Push them up nice and close. Like I said, today's like 70, so I'm sweating. But overcast. And that's always the way in queen ring. It's always raining. It's always overcast. And if you're going to have to go out and open up your cloak board or whatever it is, it's going to be raining. It's going to be overcast. So wear your suit. Unless, of course, you're in Miami. Folks in Miami can go out in their shorts just about any time. Okay, that's good, that's good. This hive will be getting a laying queen. I don't need any drone comb from her because she's a 22. A nice reserve of these worker comb and if you just keep a certain stock of them you won't be disappointed if this is the method you choose to do I have no problem giving them a foundationless frame if that's not pulled yet making sure that it's up against worker comb so that the new queen can then lay and build it since she's already off to a great start. Close her up. This is my tag it needs to come off because she's not here anymore. She's down here. So once again, this is the frame the queen was on. This is empty with pollen. This She's on it with open brood and some cap brood. This is open brood, more brood, pollen, honey, and honey. And these are empty but drawn comb. I'm going to confine her completely by closing this little gap up to the other side. When I set in a frame in four days, it will be dated. So then in four days I come back and I can tell just where it is. So I could mark this one today's date because it has absolutely no, no, uh, no eggs, no anything. Ooh, what the hell? I don't know if you guys can see that. That is a big old spidey. Just saw a gigantic black spider. They're, I'm known to have black widows and brown widows. So anyway, back to my dates. If you date it, then you know how old the larva is in it. As long as it was put in that date and you can give or take a day you would understand from my previous videos what to look for 
she's in her original spot. I'm going to turn that more so they get confused and fly back to the original home. But either way, because I have the queen in this hive, she's still fine. That's enough to stop her from walking out and going around and finding her on the other side. One other thing that you could do is feed her. You can either have an in-house feeder, in-hive in feeder, or put an excluder on top of her and then do your baggy feeder or whatever it is your hive top as long as she can't get over to the other side of that barrier now in my experience in my experience tend to not go over the dividers because I use four-way uh, mating nukes, double mating nukes, double queened hives. They tend to not go over the divider and I only use like that quarter inch Luan type. It's not that, it's not a wide, you know, one inch barrier. It's just a slight barrier. So this will give you a chance to pull one frame go into basically only 10 frames not a huge population but you've got your perfect queen confined and if the maintenance is making sure she's fed making sure you just gave her the new frame so that in four days you can graft from it uh, you do have to you know periodically check that she's laying uh, in the frame basically the day or so that you give it to her because if you're grafting and you pull it and it's still eggs, it's no good to you. But give her a, give her that extra day and you've got that 12 to 24 hour period to pull a good larva and graft from her. It's the perfect way to get a perfect graft from your perfect queen. And aren't we all just perfect queens? So until next time, happy beekeeping. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, click the bell, yada, 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 and be sweet, everybody.